You are my beloved son, on whom my favor rests. These are the words that the Father confirmed on his son as he came out of the Jordan. As I said to you in the beginning of this Mass, the question that we are going to ask and we are going to meditate is, are we the favors of God? Is God pleased with us? We who claim that we are his children. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah spoke about that word that will come from the lips of God and will never return to God before it do her work. He was speaking about the hope that although Jerusalem is undergoing through a hard time of the Bible ex exodus because of the Babylonians there, they are ready to let go of them because a new king is going to arise, Cyrus of Persia, who overcome Babylon. And he's telling them that now he's going to bring them to Zion. He's going to feed them with finest food. He's going to give them finest wine and milk. But also he is going to say that he is going to renew the covenant that he made with David. That he will be a father to him and he will be a son. And that happened in few days when we celebrate the Feast of the Incarnation. How God become one of us for one reason. So that we become sons and daughters of the Father and also heir of the kingdom. He paid the price for us on the cross to take away the sin that offended God. But also he gave us the pledge to be heirs with him of God's holy kingdom. Today the church in the second reading reflect on who we are. Reflect that our baptism was given to us not just in water. But was given to us with that spirit that God influenced in us. And give us also that blood. Because it is the blood of Jesus that redeemed us. If God did not send his son to die for us, we cannot even merit of his passion and death. And that's why every sacrament is part of that great mystery of the dying and rising of Jesus. And that's why in the sacrament of baptism we die with Christ and under the water we go. So that from that water we rise again as people designed by the grace of God to be his very children and also heirs of the kingdom. That's why St. John said we are not baptized by water, but we are baptized by the Spirit. We are baptized by the blood. Because that's why Jesus began his ministry in the waters of baptism and end his ministry in the other baptism of blood. Because he wants to say to each one of us that not the physical water, but it's really the passion and death, the marriage of that passion and death that's going to save us. And today we are going to reflect on the sacrament of baptism. And so baptism, as we know from our catechism, is a sacrament by which original sin is forgiven we become members of God's family, members of the church, and baptism open for us the door for the other sacraments to receive them. Let's begin with the first one. We are cleansed from original sin. Many of you said, Father, why I have to suffer with the sin of those people of thousands and thousands of years ago? Because when God created the human nature, he created in a perfect condition. And because of this obedience of those people whom from which we inherit this nature, the nature that God creates so beautiful become a fallen nature. And so each one of us by virtue of birth that come in the flesh, we inherit also what they have done. It's like each one of us. The genes, the blood, everything that we have, we inherited from our parents. 
You cannot say I am not the child of these people because your actions, your looks, your blood, everything that you have, you inherit it from them. And so we, we inherit this nature from these people. And so we inherit not the perfect nature, but we inherit the fallen nature. And that's why we need to be cleansed. Because disobedience of humanity, although it is forgiven by the blood of Christ, is still in each one of us. We still have the effect of that original sin. Many people say, how do you say that? Because the sin of Adam and Eve is the sin of each one of us. Each one of us have in within him that desire to do good. But we find ourselves doing what is not really good. That is coming from that fallen nature. Many times you are insulted and in return you insult others. You have been put down and so you want to put others down. That's the human nature. That is one that we have, the, the nature that we have. And we have to go beyond that. We have to, live, as we say, lift up beyond that. And that's why we need to be cleansed from that sin. And open for us the grace of God, which is the life of God within us. And that's why when we receive that sacrament, not only we are cleansed, but also we are now adopted as sons and daughters of the Father. And how do we know that? Because Jesus revealed it to us. He said to us, from now on, when you pray, you say, Our Father. He said to Mary Magdalene, from now on, I am going to my Father and your Father. So by, the, by Jesus, we all become brothers and sisters with Christ. And together with our older brother, we have now to the Spirit of God within us to call God our Father. And that's why then, not only become children of God, but become also members of the church. That church that by which Christ not only redeemed it, but on that cross, from his very heart, he gave her birth. And that's why blood and water flow from the side of Christ. The waters of baptism, but also the, water, the blood signify the food that he gives to those who are born through him, to the life of grace. And that's why we are members of the church. And that's why each one of us have to ask the question, what shall I do to be a true child of God? And Jesus gave us the answer. If you love me, keep my commands. Period. If you love me, keep my commands. And what are the commands? Thou shalt give God all your heart, all your mind, all that you are. And the other, love your neighbor as other as you want them to love you. Very simple. Many people think that the commandments of God are suggestions. They are not suggestions. They are commands. All of them are necessary for us. Not only to lead a good life, but even for the order of society. If you do not say bad words to other people, and others do not say about you, if you don't have grudges in your heart, and others will not have grudges against you, if you do to others what you don't want people to do to you, then you are going to live in a peaceful world. And that is exactly what all about is the commandments of God. It's not do not, do not, do not, negative. In fact, Jesus said, the commandment is not burdensome. It's commandment by which you are going to live. Commandment by which you are going to have peace. Commandment by which you show that you really love me. Because to love is not just a word, it's a commitment. And that's why we need to understand that, dear people. That's why Jesus today is saying to us, if you really love God and God is pleased with you, Keep the commandments. How many times do we think that missing Sunday Mass is all right? Who are you, God? You are not God. You are the one who received the word of God. 